Welcome to Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies, coming to you from our 2022 Convention and Legislative Summit taking place in Washington, D.C. We are pleased to bring you convention coverage made possible by our sponsors, sponsoring the podcast at this convention, Autodesk. Autodesk is changing how the world is designed and made. Their technology spans architecture, engineering, construction, product design, manufacturing, media, and entertainment empowering innovators everywhere to solve challenges big and small. From more sustainable, resilient infrastructure to higher-performing building designs, the Autodesk AEC collection gives every designer, engineer, and contractor the tools to create in new ways, explore what's possible, and build with confidence. Welcome to Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies, coming to you from our 2022 Convention and Legislative Summit taking place in Washington, D.C. I am joined today with Brent White from ARW Engineers and the outgoing chair of Case Coalition, the Coalition of American Structural Engineers. Welcome to the show, Brent. Thanks for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. So let's let's talk about coalition. So uh, the Case Coalition has been around for some time. and is it true that it was the first coalition at ACC? So? It's my understanding it was the first coalition. Uh, it was started in the early 80s, and it was an outgrowth of a similar group of uh, structural engineering firms that were sponsored by an insurance company back then, DPIC, which no longer exists, but it was a Structural Engineers Risk Management Council with the whole purpose was to try and manage business and technical risk. Uh, When the insurance company kind of went away from sponsoring that, then uh, ACEC had been a participant and and encouraged that participation. So when that disappeared, they became a coalition of ACEC. That's that's good history to see how it it was really the start of the coalitions. And then from that point, you are now the chair of the coalition, the outgoing chair. So talk about your time as the chair. What kind of value have you seen um, sitting as the chair and amongst all the members? It's, it's a little bit difficult to, to differentiate, you know, what value I see as the chair as opposed to the value I've seen with my participation over the years. I've, sure. I've been actively involved with CASE for about 20 years which includes being involved with committees. And then for the past, I guess, eight, seven or eight years, I've been on the executive committee. And then I served as a, a year as a chair elect and this current year as, as chair. So to, to see the value that I've, I, I've seen. Um, well, maybe I, not even as the chair, but. Yeah, so I, I, I think my best perspective is for me and for my own firm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're a small firm. Uh, currently, we're, there's 35 of us in our office. Uh, case is not limited to firm size because it's it's discipline specific. Uh, so we have firms that have two individuals clear up to firms with hundreds of employees, which one of the advantages that I see in participating is that you get a broad perspective of the challenges that everyone faces. And... Interestingly, the challenges often are the same, regardless of the size of the of business you run, but your approach to how you handle them varies. So it's okay. nice to get interaction and have discussions and, and learn what others are doing. Uh, there are lots of products that, that the coalition produces. You know, we have tools, we have contracts, we have guidelines, we sponsor programs. But for me personally, the greatest value that I get is the interaction and networking with other like engineers and understanding their issues and realizing that sometimes I might have something that works for me that can help a 200 person firm. Right. You know, it's interesting that you bring up the size of your firm because I talked to uh, Billy, I can't I can't think of his last name, the, the chair of the Small Firms Coalition. And, you know, I, he was telling me that they kind of span across all different um, areas of a small firm, right? HR, IT, all the different right. challenges or business specific um, specialty areas outside of just the engineering uh, portion of that. 
So you talked about documents, publications. So talk to me about how those are tailored to your specific members. And those are only available to members of the coalition, correct? That is not correct, actually. Oh, okay. So it, it's, a, it's a direct benefit of being a coalition member. So if you're a coalition member, all of the products that Case produces are available as part of your membership. Gotcha. Uh, outside of that, the documents are available to anyone. If you're an ACEC member, there's a discounted ACEC price, but anybody can go into the bookstore and buy the products. Gotcha. Okay. So let's talk about some of the challenges that case members are addressing or tackling right now. Is there anything specifically that top of mind or recent? It doesn't have to be immediately or right now, just um, of note that, that you have seen come across um, that has made an impact or um, one that You know, when we look at uh, AC, ACC does a nice job of tracking the, the, the tool sales or the document sales and downloads. And we have several that are year after year recurring popular downloads and popular purchases. One of them is a, it's a, an engineering intern checklist. And we kind of refer to it as the Boy Scout, Eagle Scout checklist because it's <laughs> similar in nature, but the, the intent of this checklist is, uh, especially for smaller firms that don't have sophisticated or developed education and mentoring programs, a way to help younger, less experienced engineers progress and know the things that they need to become proficient at. Gotcha. So the, the goal in mind is if you follow this, this checklist, over a period of four years or so, then it will guide you in on the path to be able to be a PE, to pass the PE and then move forward with your career. Well, there's a ton of value in that, absolutely. So just having access to that checklist and you know, following it. And then, I, I mean, I know you talked about networking a lot. So you have the checklist, let's say you join a coalition, you have the checklist, would you recommend an additional layer on top of that checklist is the benefit of the networking, right? So you Correct. have a checklist. So oh, I have a question. Who can I come to? Right. Can I, can I give Brent a call and say, Brent, I'm stuck here. Um, can you help me through that? And is, is that an accurate depiction of what you may see from members of the coalition? I think so. Uh, to varying extents, the, the coalition members are active. There's a, an online forum as well that is very useful okay. for uh, asking questions and getting responses. And that, that waxes and wanes in its popularity and its use, but it's, it's available. And, and you, you ask about other things that are useful and helpful. I think, uh, as I mentioned, we do contracts as well. And we just went through a process of updating all of the contracts and agreements. Mm -hmm. And that happened over a, a several year period, but just this past year, they were all updated and they have been purchased and downloaded quite a bit. And I know our, our firm, uh, if we're not bound to trying to use an agreement from a client, we start with the case documents. We have the case documents that and contracts that we have integrated into our own use and, and we use those. And that's the thing that's nice about the case contracts they're, they're open source. Malleable. So you can modify them. Right. I mean, hopefully we're using legal counsel if we change them too much, but they're adaptable to our own circumstances, which is really nice. That's a great benefit. That's a great benefit. Uh, so I'm going to shift just a little bit here. If you can tell me about Case's relationship to SEI and N NCSEA, to other organizations uh, that are in the business of structural engineering, what is there a collaboration there? Are you working together? There is a collaboration. It's really interesting because we get asked and the other organizations get asked as well, why are there so many structural engineering associations? Mm. And it's a, it's a good question. And we do collaborate, but it hasn't always been as collaborative as it is right now. In fact, this afternoon, we do have a meeting scheduled where all three of us are going to get together with our leadership groups and have our semi-annual meeting, which we, we 
do. And so we collaborate. We kind of uh, have identified where our own wheelhouses are so that we don't step on toes. Okay. And that we that allows us to actually work together. Sure. And for instance, um, a couple of examples. Just this past March, uh, we had a virtual town hall, which involved the leadership of all three organizations. We did uh, an hour and a half um, online town hall, uh, invited uh, members from all the organizations to participate. We each took some time and, and talked about our own organizations. And then we talked about things that we're working together on and then had a Q&A. And it had over 400 wow. participants, which was pretty good. And there was lots of Q&A and there's, a, there's quite a bit of feedback. Another example is specifically with uh, NCSEA. Uh, we participate with them on a business of structural engineering seminar that happens before their annual convention. Okay. They recognize that we have some expertise in the risk management and business management side. So we work with them and we put this uh, one day uh, seminar together. The last one was virtual because of COVID. Sure. This sure. year it will be in person in Chicago in the fall. So. Okay. That's great. I, the, the layers of collaboration and networking among the members and clearly outside just a case um a, a lot of benefit there uh so brent um, do you have anything else that you would like to just talk about in terms of the, the coalition um of american structural engineers or anything else that you would you feel like so, any of our listeners may need to know who are considering joining um a coalition i, I would say especially to acc member firms that have a structural emphasis or a structural division. So if they have structural engineers, I would encourage them to look into it. Um, there are a lot of ACC firms that have structural engineers that do not currently participate in case. Uh, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's still a lack of understanding or lack of awareness, but I'd encourage them to look, look us up. Uh, and again, it doesn't matter how big you are, how small you are, what your structural emphasis is, particularly with clients, which whether you're horizontal, vertical, vertical construction, whatever, uh, we would welcome new members. Well, thank you, Brian. And that's coming from someone who has 20 years of experience, who has seen the coalitions probably change over time and you stuck, or you stuck with it. And clearly there's a lot of benefit there. So um, if you are considered joining a coalition, please look into CASE or other coalitions that ACEC offers. Uh, Brent, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, enjoy the rest of the convention. And this has been a Engineering Influence, a podcast from the American Council of Engineering Companies. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.